Hi Church, good to be with you today. Hope you are having a incredible week wherever you are in the world watching this. Um, I am Lindsay, uh, we, with my husband Matt, we are the South Locations in uh, Pastors in Manchester uh, and we have uh, a little boy Jack and a little girl Lily uh, who are four and three and keep us very busy indeed and uh, so you have me so um, I get to share a, th one, a thought with you uh, today so I hope you have got your bible um, you're ready to hear what God um, wants to maybe speak into your life today um, so we are looking at a few scriptures uh, the first one is Matthew 27 verses 51 to 53 and we're just looking at the subject of the the gospel the gospel of power um so we are going to look at just the power of god uh in our lives and and at working in our lives so the first scripture that we are going to look at is as i said matthew 27 and i'll read it to you because uh, it's just short so at, the moment, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split and the tombs broke open. The body of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resur resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. I love this scripture. It just, uh, it's a complete demonstration of the power of God once Jesus had died in that moment, uh, the, the, the curtain being torn into and God's power um, breaking forth into our worlds. And, uh, and especially the, the, obviously the part of the scripture where the bodies of many holy people were raised to life and they went into the city. And um, that just brings up more questions as you read that. And it's definitely something that we, I will definitely want replaying when I get to heaven. Cause I've got, I want to know what happened to these holy people. You know, did they go back and see their family? What did their family, how did that go? What did they think? Um, did they then, you know, carry on with their lives like did they get jobs again get married um did they die again you know just what happened to these people um but it's just uh, an incredible demonstration of just god's power uh breaking out and um you know for many of us this is a familiar part of the um the gospel of jesus's you know death and resurrection um you know whether the moment that Jesus said it is finished, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. And, you know, for many hours, we know that that curtain in the temple symbolized the separation of God and man. And, you know, we, um, if we were alive, you know, back then, you and I would never have been allowed to access the presence and power of God. It was only the high priest that was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies to access his presence. And, but now through the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus and everything that he accomplished on the cross, that God was no, is no longer contained to the Holy of Holies. And in that moment that that curtain was torn, the power and the presence of God broke out and it broke out into our wills so that now you and I have full access to that power and that presence of God and um, that's incredible as a Christian that's an incredible part of our gospel and um, in Romans 8 verse 11 it says again you'll know this and if the spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. So this same power, the same power that tore the curtain from top to bottom, that shook the earth, that caused Jesus um, to, to be resurrected from death and, and to overcome um, the enemy and also for these holy people to come alive again. That power is in you and I. So it dwells within you and I. And I want us just to pause in that moment, in this moment, just to contemplate that again afresh. As a Christian, we have something so powerful and so unique. Not only do we have a gospel of truth, but we have a gospel of power. 
and that that power lives in you and I. And because of that, because of that power that, that we have access to, that comes and lives in and through our lives, we as Christians have to live differently. So when we step out into our worlds, whether it's work or education or whether we're at home with family, that we carry that presence and power of God into every area and sphere of society that we work in. And so the challenge is, is for us today is how do we outwork that power in our worlds? And um, in 1 Corinthians, this is the last scripture, but 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And again, that's just a reminder to us that we have something that we can talk about Jesus and we can talk about the truth of, of everything that he accomplished on the cross. But not only can we do that, we can actually demonstrate the power of God in our worlds. We can pray for the sick and believe for them to be healed. We can pray for situations that, uh, that need reconciliation and believe that they can be reconciled. And that is the uniqueness that we have as Christians, uh, that we have the Holy Spirit in us, out working in and through us in our in our lives in every area of our lives, and um, there's so much talk um, with re other religions. There's so much talk with other religions, and there's so much um, so many voices that we listen to. Um, and so many voices that our world listen to. So our friends, our work colleagues, um, our family, they will be listening to the news, they listen to the media, they listen to social media. But actually there's no power accompanied with, with that talk. And what we have is we have the power of God living in us that we can demonstrate that in, in our worlds. And so my prayer for you today and for myself is that we would be filled again afresh today with your, with his Holy Spirit and that this week that you would have opportunities in your worlds to outwork the power of God in your world. So maybe that's going to be, you know, praying for the sick, laying hands of the sick, um, we can hug now, so we can lay hands on, on one another and we can pray and believe in faith for, for the miracles and we can pray for our neighbour's marriage situation. We can pray and believe that a miracle is going to happen there or maybe it's a sick, you know, member of your family that, that needs to know the power of God. And so the challenge is for you and I is to have opportunities this moment, to step this week, to step out audaciously and to believe and have faith. So I'm going to pray for you right now just to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to have those God opportunities this week. So let's pray. Yeah, Jesus, we thank you for your um, the power of the cross, for everything, Jesus, that you accomplished on the cross um, for for our lives and to have a relationship with you, but also to, to have um, Holy Spirit to come and live in us and outwork um, the power of God in our worlds, to our worlds. And so, Holy Spirit, I just pray right now for everyone listening and for myself that you'd come again and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Come and fill us afresh with your presence and your power that we would um, be so full of you right now so full of your presence that as we go into our worlds this week that you would give us opportunity after opportunity to pray and believe the miraculous in our worlds god give us um moments where we are reminded of this in in our week that we can when we hear of a problem or hear of someone sick that we can go you know what i know someone who who can heal you and, uh, and we have the power in and through us to lay on hands and believe for the sick. So God, I pray for those God moments this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I pray and I'm believing for those moments for you and uh, hopefully get to hear maybe some of the miracles that will take place just from us stepping out in faith and believing for healing and for the presence of God. 
and to be outworked in, in our lives. But have a great rest of your day and week and uh, God bless. Bye.